Hey guys, you're watching Dansky and today we're recreating the new 2021 iMac all in Photoshop. So first we're going to start by creating the body of the iMac out of basic shapes, nice and easy. Then we're going to add the shadows and highlights using some adjustment layers. And we're also going to finish by adding an adjustment layer that enables us to change the color of the iMac to anything. And creating something like this isn't as difficult as you'd think. In fact, it's just a few techniques used in the right way. So that's enough of me talking now, let's get started. Rightio, first create a new document and I'm gonna set the width and height to 7680 by 3840, basically 8K. Once you've done that, select the rectangle tool, click anywhere and enter these dimensions. This is the resolution for the new iMac. You can adjust the scaling by holding shift to make sure you don't lose those proportions and then double click the thumbnail and just pick any color. Press command or control J to duplicate the layer and then double click the thumbnail on the bottom layer and pick a different color. For this one, I think we'll go with a blue. Next, go into free transform with command or control T and then make this blue shape a little bit larger around all four edges. Duplicate again, adjusting the position and scale. This is going to be the chin for the iMac. With the shape selected from the properties panel, we can adjust the corner radius just to round off the bottom left and bottom right corners. And we can do the same for the other shapes as well. We're also going to zoom in nice and close and make sure these shapes line up perfectly, making sure to remove the default stroke. We'll also pick a different color for this top part and make it a little bit more iMac-esque and move everything up. Next, we'll use the rectangle tool to draw the stand and make sure it's aligned to the center. Make sure this new layer is on the bottom behind the other layers. And now it's starting to all come together. I'm going to update the color of the chin and then use the eyedropper tool to sample that same color for the stand. Now the outer part of the display is still looking a bit blue, so I'm just going to desaturate that slightly and then pick a different color for the display, at least just for now. There we go, that's better. Next, duplicate the stand, squish this down and we're going to use this for the base. Squish it some more and then move it up so it lines up perfectly. And exactly the same as before, we're then going to round off the corners from the properties panel. And at this point, it's probably worth selecting all of the layers and grouping them together with a name. Next, from the adjustment icon, I'm going to add an exposure adjustment layer and then just take a moment to name all of my layers, just so I don't get confused. I'm then going to drag that exposure adjustment layer above my stand, right click and select create clipping mask. This ensures that any adjustments only affect the layer below. I can now adjust the exposure to make this slightly darker, select the mask and press command or control I to invert the mask. This will hide the effect. Next, I can select the brush tool, grab one of Photoshop's soft brushes, and with white as the foreground color, I can then brush back in that exposure layer, holding shift to make sure it's straight. I can do the same here with a smaller brush, and if you make a mistake, just go to edit and select undo until you get something you're happy with. Essentially, what I'm doing here is adding shadows to these flat surfaces. Next, I'm going to add another exposure adjustment layer, and I'm going to use this to add some highlights. So we're going to make this one a bit brighter, And then as we did before, select the mask, invert it, and use the brush tool to brush in those highlights. And you can also adjust the hardness from the brush panel if you'd like a softer edge to your brush. Okay, I'm going to add one more exposure adjustment layer to the stand and make this one really, really dark. And this technique we're using, whereby we adjust the exposure to add shadows and highlights, is a great way to make a flat surface have a bit more depth. So next we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to use exposure adjustment layers to add shadows and highlights to the base. And the aim here is to make the base feel like it has rounded corners on the left and the right. So you can see me adding the shadows here and then on a separate adjustment layer, I'm adding the highlights. And as before, I do add a much darker one just for the very edges. And if we zoom out now, well, you can see it's starting to come together. Okay, so next we're going to right click the display layer, select blending options and then stroke. Make this a solid stroke with a black fill, set the position to inside and then adjust the size. And I've just realized that I haven't actually saved this yet. So let's go file, save as, and just quickly save this. Once again, I'm going to change the color of the display. I think I'll go with a mid gray this time. And then all of the blue parts of the iMac that would be made of metal, I'm going to group these together and give them a name. This will enable us to change the color of the body really quickly and easily at the end. And I'm just going to grab the chin layer and pop this in there as well. And speaking of the chin layer, I'm going to add an exposure adjustment layer, make this nice and bright, and then right click this and select create clipping mask. 
I can then again invert the mask and brush in a nice highlight. This just adds a bit more depth as I mentioned earlier and if I turn this off and back on you can see the difference. Now I'm going to add one more exposure adjustment layer for the body. I'm actually going to clip this to the entire colored body group and this enables me to adjust the exposure of the entire lower half of the iMac. So in this case I just made it a bit brighter. Okay, this next bit is a lot of fun. So I'm going to add another adjustment layer, select solid color. I'm going to pick a nice bright color and then right click and select create clipping mask. And you can see this is no good until I change the blending mode to color. And this blends that solid color over the body of the iMac. And now we can change the hue to anything we like. So this gives you a lot of flexibility. We can of course turn this off and back on, change the color. And I'm going to give this layer a suitable name just so I remember what it does. Next, I'm going to add a new layer and position this under the stand and then use the rectangle tool to draw some feet for the base. So again, I'm going to adjust the corner radius to round these off, move them into position and then pick a really dark color. Once it's all looking good, press Command or Control J to duplicate that layer. And then you can use the arrow keys to move it to the other side. Okay, that's enough of that. Next, let's add a new layer and we'll call this shadow. Move this to the bottom of the layer stack and then using that soft brush together with black, you can just click and then squish this down using free transform, position it in the center and you've created a nice shadow. And if you do position this centrally, you can then scale holding alt or option and this will scale it from both sides at the same time. You can also adjust the opacity from the top of the layers panel and even add a layer mask and use the brush tool to adjust the left and right edges if they do extend a bit too far for your liking. Now at this point, I think everything is looking good, but the proportions are a bit off. So I'm going to scale up the upper part of the iMac, select the chin and then select the direct selection tool. And then I can drag over these bottom anchor points on the chin and then use the mouse or the arrow keys to adjust the size. And doing it this way means that I'm not going to distort the shape or its corners. Okay, I'm just going to make a few minor adjustments to the position here and then just scale up the display ever so slightly. Lastly, I'm going to select the ellipse tool located under the rectangle tool and just click and hold shift to draw a circle. Scale it down and position it up top centrally and this is going to form part of the webcam. So we'll give this layer a name, we'll go with camera outer and then right click this and select blending options. Select gradient overlay and then from the gradient slider just pick the default black to white. You can adjust the angle or reverse this all together and then go in and we'll change this from white to a mid grey. And then we'll change the black to an almost black but not quite colour. Click OK and then remove that default stroke again. Next, we can duplicate this layer and we'll rename this camera lens. Again, let's go back into the blending options and we'll give this a solid color overlay. And from the color picker, we're going to pick black. And we can then use free transform to scale this down inside the other circle. And then I'm going to add another new layer and call this camera highlight. And for this, I'm very lazily just going to select white as the foreground color, select the brush tool and in the top right corner, go boop. And there we go. There's a camera highlight and we could just bring the opacity down from the top of the layers panel. And it's pretty small, so I think this will suffice. We'll group all these tiny layers together and just give this the name camera. And there we go. We've created the new 2021 iMac in Photoshop. And there we go. So that wraps up the video. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. And if you have any questions about the techniques used in this video, or you'd just like to say thanks, Ginger, well, we've got the comments section down there. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. You can also ding the bell for notifications. But anyway, that's it from me. Take care and I'll see you next time.